Nico, Gab, and Liam are from the Homeschool Global Alumni Association. They continue to lend a helping hand to homeschoolers in their movement to connect and give back to the community that brought them together. Their willingness to give back, eagerness to do good, and ability to persevere are just some of the many factors that make them the leaders that they are today. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of In Love With Me. This is where we feature inspiring individuals who will share their amazing stories. I am your host, Mafe Yunan Velasco, and for this series, our topic is Leaders of Today. You all know the world is filled with leaders and game changers of all ages and backgrounds. This season, we aim to highlight people who make a positive impact in the world around them and their actions and words. So for today's guest, I've been waiting for these three to hop on because they are a true testament of what young leaders are. We have three amazing individuals who continuously change the game in every way possible. We have the Homeschool Global Association team, starting off with Liam Niaras, HGNHU associate, Gab Aldaba, head of Homeschool Global Association, and of course, Nico Velasco, HGAA, head of marketing. Together, they aim to lead others to become their best selves by serving as an example in their respective fields. And that is what makes these young men the leader that they are today. So let's all welcome Liam, Gab, and Nico. Hello, guys. Hey, everyone. Thank Hi, you. thank you for having us. <laughs> so this is very intentional mini reunion, though I know you guys have been uh, working super hard to keep the homeschooling, I guess, love and passion that you guys all experience. So speaking of that, I do want to start off by sharing with our community right here, tuned in on Facebook, on Kumu, um, you know, a little bit about your background and how did homeschooling start in your lives? Maybe we can start off with Gab. Gab, tell us about your journey right. as a homeschooler. All right. So I was homeschooled since I was about uh, 11 years old. I started homeschooling uh, because my mom said, why not try homeschooling? You know, the more uh, exposed to sports, to people, to communities, unlike in a conventional school where you just sit mm -hmm. in, in class with your classmates. So. That's what made me a homeschooler, my mom told me. And through that, you know, I learned so much more about character, about loving God, and about who you are and what your passions are. And so that homeschool really helped me uh, in knowing myself better and in also meeting new people and all those other characteristics. I love that. I love that mom is always the strong pillar of knowing yes, of what the gift would be, right? And I guess I can keep with Gab first. Gab, let's just get to know you even more and we'll ask Nico and and uh, also yeah. Liam their journey. Okay, so now that you're in college, now there's, uh, of course, a big transition for everybody that, everybody out there. Which college are you at, and how is that transition from from college or from homeschooling to college for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very interesting question because you know other people thought that as homeschoolers it would be hard for us to adjust to college, but in reality it's uh, quite the opposite because it became easy for us to transition because we already know how to mingle with other people, younger or older than us, and uh, actually I'm from. Uh, the University of Santo Tomas. Um, I'm studying entrepreneurship right now. Amazing. And of course, what are some of the important lessons you learned in your time of homeschooling? I mean, now that I always believed that college was already somewhat like homeschooling. So do you, believe, do you think that you had an advantage being a homeschooler? Yes, of course. You know, uh, just like 
you know, knowing your passions, like Nico, I, I'm sure Liam are, also knows these things, when you get to be exposed to different people. Like, for example, my parents are into business. They have um, a resort here in Bulacan. And I got to experience what it's like to manage resorts, what it's like to um, meet new business partners, and etc. And that's what made me realize my passion for business. And through entrepreneurship, I learned how to uh, do more to my advantage. Right. Amazing. And of course, let's hear from Liam. Liam, tell us about your homeschooling journal. Because fun fact, I experienced your confidence when there was an event. Nico, remind me of that. When you all received your rings, what was the event? It was a really special Right, oh, the period ball. Ball. Okay. and you were the host, and I was uh -huh. like, "How old is this kid?" But <laughs> you were actually very young with this confidence within you. So, tell us about how your homeschool journey, because I, right there and there, I was sold because of you, Liam. Wow, thank you. Um, <laughs> you know, that, that event had a mark, my guess. But yes, since uh, you mentioned that, I actually started um, in my leadership journey as a host, and. Um, I've been doing that for High Night. So High Night is Homeschool Global's official high school community. And that's where me, Nico, and Gab actually met each other. So I was homeschooled when I was in fifth in the fifth grade. Um, quite funny because I was actually already enrolled in a conventional school when my parents decided to pull me out and actually have me start homeschooling. Since then, it's just been a, a great and terrific ride. It's not the, It's not a perfect ride, but a lot of we learned a lot of uh, lessons and going, and I think more than I would have had I stayed in conventional school. Because, you know, in conventional school, you're kind of limited by what the teacher is going to say, um, yes. kind of what God was saying. Um, in homeschooling, you can really invest time in the things that you think are worth investing in versus just memorizing a bunch of uh, laws or equations. So, so, yeah, that's pretty much my homeschooling journey. We've been working together, bringing the community together in um, high and night. And right now in the Homeschool Global Alumni Association, we're continuing to do that. Um, kind of what the audience see in the photos when the show started, that's what we love doing. Uh, Nico, Gab, and I, we bring people together and we, we love doing that. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, which college are you at now? So right now I'm going to Ateneo, Ateneo de Manila mm -hmm. University. I'm currently a second year taking BS Management Engineering. So that's what I'm doing. Wow. Amazing, Liam. And of course, you know, I'm sure a lot of parents are also tuned in. And mm. how was it for you in transitioning to homeschooling to college? Mm. So I guess um, what Gab said is also correct, um, that it, 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 homeschooling definitely had an advantage, especially nowadays um, in the time of pandemic, since, well, everyone's pretty much homeschooled nowadays and yes. <laughs> everyone's online. But I guess I, I, I wouldn't be able to to share my experience going on campus since I never really experienced that. But right now with all the, the workload and the time schedule, I'd say homeschooling has really helped me develop my emotional quotient or my ability to relate with people. And I think that what matters most um, mm -hmm. in college, especially as you relate with your different classmates and professors, more than the grades and more than just navigating your way academically, I think it's important to be able to relate properly you know with with your community the people around you and that's something that i don't think conventional schools teach as much as um well i would hope to because in in reality school is just like a, a fraction of the in, entire society like gab said there's businesses there are many other communities around there and i think as leaders of the 21st century we need to be able to relate not just to people of the same age level but you know with different professionals as well whether they're older or younger we need to learn how to respect them and to be able to communicate properly with them in order to forward um a greater movement so i guess yes. that's, that's my biggest learning yeah and we will talk about that greater movement um, later on, but let's hear from Nico. Nico, of course, I know you, <laughs> and I'm sharing you always with everyone, the world. So please share your homeschool journey and uh, how has it empowered you? So it's empowered me a lot. Um, I actually started in high school um, in eighth grade, or no, in ninth grade. So I was a freshman in high school when I started homeschooling. And um, I was a very shy kid. 
to begin with. Um, I, you know that. I think both Liam and Gab probably can remember that when we first met. I wasn't as out of my shell. But um, homeschooling really kind of instilled so many values in, you know, who I am as a person and how I carry myself, my outlooks on life, and pretty much every aspect of my life. Um, and it really brought out the best in me. And it introduced me to so many great people. I mean, Liam, Liam and Gab are just some of the many friends that I've, you know, picked up and the connections and relationships that I've built along my homeschooling journey. Um, I, at first, I did not want to homeschool, I'll be honest with you guys. Um, and my mom knows this. I was very against it. Um, but then we came across the High Unite community and the homeschooling community, and I felt so at home. Um, to be with people who have good hearts and are Christ um, centered and they live, you know, good lives and they, they don't have any bad intentions. They're not backstabbers or toxic or people who you'd usually find in conventional schools. Um, and I really appreciated that. So I'm grateful, you know, to be part of the alumni for Homeschool Global and to be part of the HCAA because it's really a game changing movement and a game changing association that we hope can empower not just um, alumni, but current homeschoolers so that they know that they're not alone after um, after their high school journeys. So, yes, let's talk about that. So I'll bring the uh, Liam and uh, Gab back on. So speaking of the Global Alumni Association, would you both, would you, who would like to share how it was even, um, was it an idea? Was it all, always in the works? And how did we choose the team members? Maybe Gap, you can start off of how it was created. Sure, sure. So yeah, like, well, it started as an idea. You know, when we moved, when actually I had this question in my mind when I was uh, transitioning from homeschooling to college because it was hard for me to, you know, apply, you know, that's the only, the, that's the hardest thing actually for me to apply in this college, in the different colleges. So I thought that if there are support systems for homeschooling where we could just connect with the people in the different colleges who are homeschooled previously, then it would be easier. And so Liam joined in and he had more ideas. Uh, and then Kui Wancho, our advisor also, and our friend who was also telling us, oh, we can do this, we can do that. And it became uh, a system. Actually, it's just started this year. And we have two departments, two main departments, uh, which is uh, connections and giving back. So we want to connect all the alumni and we want to give back to high night, homeschool. Amazing. And Liam, as an HG, an HU associate, what does your, uh, I guess, your title entail? And and what do you do to connect, because you have HG and HU, to be um, coordinating with? Mm. Right. So when we actually started this movement, you know, the Homeschool Global Alumni Association, we wanted to basically continue what we already started in, in High Unite, which is where we all met. And we really wanted to push forth a, a movement where people could just get together and be able to encourage each other and, and do something worthwhile in, in these few days that we have here on earth. And so it's just amazing what Nico said to be able to just come together, encourage one another, meeting the likes of Nico and Gab and of course, uh, many others. So our mission in HGA is right to be able to connect and give back. So what Connect essentially does is we wanna bring alumni together, there it is on the screen, to provide a platform for alumni to get connected and give back to High Unite. So connections being all those who have graduated from Homeschool Global, they get to come together and connect. So whether these be through um, homecoming events or gatherings or um, conferences, we can come together. And giving back, on the other hand, is now in turn, as the name suggests, to give back to the existing homeschooling community where current homeschoolers can glean on our experiences and learn from us as we empower them to make the right decisions when they go into college or as they move forward um, in life. And what's exciting about this is the fact that many people are coming towards this 
association and we have perks and benefits like we recently partnered up with national bookstore to get blanket discounts on on their products and there are many more partnerships that we have moving forward in this time and age we're just very excited um to be able to continue this movement yes Yes, I'm excited to collaborate with you all also. So maybe no announcements yet. But regardless, you know, there's a big support system for for young leaders like yourself. Of course, you guys are the, the future. And speaking of that, of course, Nico, the head of marketing, it takes a village, right? And I can see that we have some of your team members also tuned in, like, like Jasmine. Alessa, Gabrielle, maybe you can share who else is part of this amazing uh, team that you have, Nico. Yes, we have um, so many people part of our team, and we have uh, we have Lee, uh, Tomas. We also have Alea, Toledo, um, Maha Ocampo. There's so many great people that are involved, and they all play uh, an important role in what we do. Um, and I think that's part of the reason why we're able to make such an impact is because we're all pretty much on the same page. We all have the same mission and we're all just pushing forward and really striving to make sure that, you know, even after our time as homeschoolers, we get to connect and give back to the community that pretty much brought us all together. So I'm grateful for that. Um, the opportunity to really just shed light on homeschoolers um, in high school and even in life after homeschooling because we, there's so many talented homeschoolers out there and it's just a matter of shedding light on them and really showing everyone that despite all the misconceptions and mm -hmm. stereotypes that come, that surround homeschooling, um, there's so many things that can come out of it. Mm -hmm. And you know, I have witnessed your meetings and it looks so serious <laughs> and I'm just like, whoa, they're in a serious conversation and I see the passion that you all have for this so this is a question for the three of you and i guess we'll hear from gab again first your time in the association what has it taught you about yourself and your life about myself or can it be more about yourself. yes about myself yes well um if i may backtrack a few years ago when i was uh, the head of the High Unite community of HG. So I was the head of the High Unite community of HG, and uh, I had a team also on me. And funny story, because I wanted Nico to be part of that team, but he was uh, busy doing this and that. And buti na lang, uh, he's here already in HG, yes. and we're really glad to have him. Actually, he's the first person that I thought of. I mean, Nico, he's, <laughs> maybe he's free, so yeah. So that's how we picked our team, mem team members, yeah. you know with the relationships that we have previously. Um, what HGA taught me, this organization taught me in terms with myself and in general is that um, really just love is the greatest. You know, relationships are um, amazing. And these things uh, just really impact lives of other people, especially when they see us. Even if they're not team members, they're just uh, participants in one of our events or in one of our programs. Once they see the relationship that we have as a team, that's worth everything. So, yeah, that's what I learned. Amazing, Gab. You're, you're definitely inspiring others there, including myself. How about you, Liam? What has your time in the association taught you about yourself and life? Right. I what I learned from being part of this movement was really how we can really never take back time, and time is just such a limited resource um, that we have. We can get back money, perhaps we can get back our jobs, our involvements in many other things. But once a second passes by, we're never gonna be able to get that second back again. And so, what I really learned is that we need to make the most of of our time here, here on Earth. In fact, there's this study done amongst people who were already about to go and, and, and pass on. I believe there are like uh, 500 people in the study. And what was surprising was that as the researchers had a conversation with each and every one of them, there's this single thing that they all answered pretty much the same. And the question to, to this was, what was your 
biggest regret? What was your biggest regret? Pretty simple question. And almost all of them had a similar answer. And the answer was, I wish I had spent my time better. And so if people in their old age about to go, and this is their biggest lesson in life, it should be able to teach us something. And that is to make the most, really the most of our time. And we do that, like what Gab said, by spending time with others, building relationships, and focusing on what really matters. And for me, that was when I came to know my Savior, Jesus Christ. And so really just knowing him, getting to know him, falling in love with him, as the series says, in love with, with me. I believe in order to love yourself first, we need to love our creator. And then we'll be able to be, be able to greatly appreciate ourselves after that. And so that's my biggest lesson. Amen to that. And you see how I'm very intentional on making sure that Nico and his siblings are surrounded by individuals like you. Right, Nico? Yes, I'll pass it to Nico. What's, Nico, what's your biggest learning in HGA? Yes. Well. <laughs> um, well, mine is pretty cliche. It's actually teamwork makes the dream work. Wow, um, yeah. There are some people that I haven't met personally or face-to-face -face yet on the team, but you know, despite that, we still work so well together. Um, and it really is just a matter of us all playing at our own strengths and picking up each other where we need help. Um, and I see that in everything that we do because, you know, it's all really just a team effort. And the fact that we have the same mission and vision and we continue to strive forward with what we have and build on what we need to improve, I think that's going to continue to catapult us into the association that um, everyone needs because you know it's so important what we're doing and it's so valuable um, and I'm grateful that you know we really do get to impact people's lives with this because to this day we're getting messages on our social media from um, high schoolers who are asking for help with th certain things like college preparation how to do prep for SATs how to prep for college entrance exams you know how do I discover what course works right for me so these are the types of questions that we continue to help, you know, high schoolers or people who are really trying to level up, um, understand before they take on that big step. And I'm grateful to be part of a team that, you know, changes the game, like you said earlier. Yes, like Jasmine is sharing here, love the HGAA team, can't do this without each other. And true, yes. it does take a village to empower and make sure your vision and your mission is conquered, right? And speaking of your vision, um, guys, what is happening? What, what can we ex expect in the future or in the near future with the association? Hmm. By the way, I would just like to, to add before you answer that question to our audience here, um, the, the things that we're sharing, it, it, it's not specifically unique, especially the lessons to those homeschooling or you know part of this, this movement. If you're not homeschooled, but you're tuning in, I hope that, that these lessons that we're sharing, they, they're really universal and they apply wherever you are, whether you're in this in another country, you're in the Philippines, you're, you're however old. Um, the lessons that we're sharing here can be applied to you, especially if you're a student and you're in college or maybe you, you want to, you're an entrepreneur, you're starting your own um, kickstart journey or your small business. We're really here to empower each other, and that's what the series is about. We're here to encourage one another, whether in what industry or field you're in. So yes, and the question was, what do we look forward to? Gab, what yeah. do we look forward to? <laughs> <laughs> well, we look forward to many, many partnerships uh, with HGAA. Um, that can be uh, different kinds of partnerships, like National Bookstore, other hotels, you know, maybe fast food restaurants or um, anything else, you know? So we're looking forward to that. Another thing that we're looking forward to are other programs that we might have, just like the Kumu, thanks to you guys, thanks to Nico for setting it up. And, uh, you know, be able to gather as much as alumni as possible, to be able to give back, you know? And we're also, we also want to partner up soon, hopefully with uh, Best Buddies, uh, the program that, because in and it's very interesting to just really give back not only to HG, uh, High Unite, the high school community, but also to the rest of the world. Beautiful. Yes. Of course, it's always right. about empowering others. Yes, mm. Nico. To add to that, we actually have one of our first events that we're putting together um, in collaboration with High Unite, and it's called Beyond Into the Unknown. 
And basically, we will be sharing um, sharing tips and different journeys and stories of people who have really made a mark um, in their lives after high school, so college and beyond. And they will be sharing different things that they've you know learned along their journeys. Um, and we're just very excited because this is one of our first um, big events that we'll be doing, and we're going to be doing it with High Unite and. Um, Registration for that is ongoing. So if you are looking for help or if you want to learn from inspiring people, do reach out to any of us or you can check out our um, Instagram and Facebook and the registration link is there. Yeah, and I think it will be helpful for the audience to know then that, you know, this association, association is fairly new. We just started in January of this year. Mm -hmm. So we're about just seven, eight months in, into the process and I'm just grateful that everyone's here and that we're building on this slowly but surely. What I'm personally excited about is how more people are going to come and find out what truly matters in life and be able to spend time in, in the right places. So that's what I'm um, really excited about. And so if you're, if you're a kid out there or you're listening and you want to figure out, you know, where can I invest my time? How can I learn more? How do I make the most of this pandemic, which, is, which has been confusing, you know, not just for, for kids, say, but even for all the people age groups. This is something that uh, most people today have not experienced in their life it's, 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 it's a learning thing for all of us. You know, we're all adjusting. Different age groups are adjusting. Different businesses and organizations are adjusting. And I think through these adjustments, we learn. We learn to be flexible. We learn how to adapt. And these lessons carry us through. And, and that's what we're all about here in HGAA. We're here to encourage. This is the community that we have to be able to build each other up. Instead of being isolated, we're already isolated enough given the restrictions. So we need to be able to empower each other. And we look forward to the day where we can actually unite in person and have fellowship together. So that's what I'm really excited about, for all this to be over. And at the same time, yes. for the HGAA to meet in real life. That's what I'm looking forward to, yes. Exactly. And speaking of that, you know, we, we want to think positive. We want to manifest positivity in our lives. On a personal note, for the three of you, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Considering that, yes, the pandemic is over, you know, you're able to do whatever you like. How do you see yourself five years from now? I guess, Liam, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so Gab, I'm going to spill you over here. So Gab just put in a chat box here on the side. He said married. So Gab's yeah. married. And yeah. hey, who knows, right? <laughs> so um, for me, what I, what, where do I see myself in five years? I see myself really helping people and just being a, a blessing to others. Hopefully by the time I, I would have already created a passive income stream, which by the way on the side is something that I think people in their 20s should be able to invest in because you know our parents are not gonna be there forever to provide everything. And I think the earlier we create a passive income stream and secure ourselves you know, financially, um, I think the, the better it goes. I think there's a kind of a stigma when it comes to money and, and, and financial matters. People don't really talk about it, but I think we need to, over override that that system and be comfortable talking with money and, and and see how it can be sustainable because in reality that's that's how things are and we need to be sustainable right so i see myself creating a passive income stream and helping others and continuing on this movement and just continuing to impact lives and develop relationships with the people god entrusts me with and of course being found faithful with whomever the lord blesses me with the people around me nico gab and the entire community yes that's um where I see myself and I hope and I and I know that by God's grace I'll, I'll get there um, with his help only with his help so I'll pass the ball on to Nico Nico again <laughs> where do you see yourself I like Nico Thanks. <laughs> yes I'm curious also <laughs> um, well I see myself you know really just using my tools to empower other people you know my photography writing my speaking and my podcast and everything that I do it's really just to show people that they can do it too and that there is so much to look forward to in life. It's just a matter of finding what works for you and really taking it all the way. Uh, this, the Alumni Association was just a thought and an idea that was you know, brought to life by people who really put in the work to make it what it is today and it's going to continue. And so I, I wanna let people know that you know, despite all the obstacles that might stand in your way or the things that you think might hinder you from one, getting to where you want to be, anything is possible as long as you put your mind to it. And that's the message that I want to portray in everything that I do. 
Hmm. Is marriage in the picture, Nico? Like Gabby's marriage in the picture? Yeah, let's compute. <laughs> yeah. I, don't think, I don't think the mom I'm is still a... still young, you know? Oh, okay, yeah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so, I, I'm, I'm very uh, trusting in the Lord that you will all be blessed with that soulmate yeah. of yours. So in the perfect start, time. Right? In perfect yes. time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so Gabby, man, let's pass, pass it now. <laughs> pass it, boy. Yeah, Gab. Why so, did you type that? <laughs> <laughs> that's not the question i'm sorry i won't answer that question uh, okay. but anyway um uh, you know as leaders as leaders uh the most important thing that we have to have is vision and i believe that each one of us here via Miko, Tita, and all of us you know we we realize the importance of vision especially when you're leading a team you know especially when you're looking into the future and Maybe in the next five years, you'll never know. But just like Liam, you know, I want to help other people and uh, I'll build a passive income. You know, I don't know if I'm going to start a family soon or whatever, but you know, we're ready for that. You know, we'll be ready for that. And uh, it's like, you know, I want also to actually, actually, the path that I want to take is to build a school, you know, here in the Philippines. Uh, it's more of a sports school. That's what I was thinking, but uh, that's in the future. And I'm excited for it. Yes, let's manifest that. And of course, I truly believe you answered this question already, the three of you. Considering that our topic is leaders of today, I am going to ask the three of you, what is leadership to you? What does that mean in your heart? Nico, do you want to start? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, you know, for me, leadership is really putting others before yourself and having the a clear vision and mission in your and purpose in doing what you're doing and really just, you know, overcoming any obstacle that comes your way, despite how hard and challenging it may be, knowing that you are doing something for the good of other people and that you really are just leading not just um, for yourself, but for the whole team and for God. So leadership is extremely important to me because um, it's taught me a lot, not just about myself, but about how to approach others and how my outlooks on life can really affect the outcomes that come from my thoughts and everything. So um, for me, leadership is really just putting others before yourself and understanding that Despite the many things that may stand in your way, anything is possible if you continue to strive for that goal with the purpose that God has given you. All right. And Gab, what is leadership to you? Um, for me, leadership, leadership is a choice. You know, it's not for all people. Some people might say that uh, they do this, they do that, they can be called the leader. But in reality, leadership is an action word where people follow you. If there's no one following you, then you're not called the leader. So it's very important that people look up to you uh, and, and for you to set an example of uh, following God, of being Christ-like, and really uh, leading them towards Christ-likeness. So that's the essence of leadership. Yes. And of course, Liam. So for me, it's quite interesting how there isn't really a, like a solid definition of, of, of leadership. Kind of, it really has a lot of nuances and people can really add to that. So for me, in my experience, leadership is anytime you seek to influence the thinking, development, or behavior of another person. So, you know, whether you convince someone and say, hey, let's eat in this fast food chain restaurant instead of this other fast food restaurant that's leadership because you mm. let someone's train of thought shift from this direction to this direction you influence his thinking and the same way when maybe you tell a person hey let's exercise you know and he decides to go with you you influence his physical development and you know when you just model and 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 show humility and forgiveness and and all these great qualities you are influencing that person's behavior as well because as they hang out with you and as they journey with you they're able to see whom they want to emulate and for me the the effort for the audience out there and if you're interested in leadership and you want to be a great leader i think the best 
person to, to model is found in the books of Matthew to John. You'll be able to learn about him, this, the great leadership style of, of Jesus Christ. And I just want to enumerate a few of his strategies because I think it would be really helpful for us. He focused, he focused on a particular group of people. He didn't, go ev he didn't go all out and try to influence everybody at the same time. He invested in 12. And even within the 12, he invested on a smaller number of people, about three to four people to be able to reach out. He modeled, he led through example. He didn't tell people do this. He didn't just command and point his fingers. He actually washed the disciples' feet and he showed them how it is like to serve. And so it really goes against what we initially feel perhaps about leadership, that you always have to be on top, that we always have to be bossing other people around and expecting results, when in reality, we're here to serve others. And that is leadership in itself. It's servant leadership. It's about, like Nico said, it's putting others before yourself, and really modeling to everyone how it is like to serve. And that is how you bring people together, not the other way around where you boss everyone and expect everything to fall into place. So that's leadership, yeah. There you have it, guys. These are the product of homeschoolers. <laughs> and so for the parents out there, you can do it. You know, we are blessed with our children for a reason. And the more that lit my fire, because I met these young men right here, of course, Nico was already a leader in himself, but just it trickles down. And the three right here, they have siblings and they are the most luckiest siblings mm. on earth. So I thank the three of you because not only have you you know, given me goosebumps again, but um, I know everybody who's tuned in appreciates the words. You know, God is speaking through you. And I'm so excited to see what else you three will build you know because again with the association and the team that you're building we need that you know we need to empower the youth we need to empower like you continuously say liam all age groups because right now we're everybody's affected so to lighten things up guys i know we became super serious before we wrap up i will do a fun activity with the three of you so that everybody can get to know more on oh, fun. You know, the fun side, okay? So I was inspired by the book, Strengths Finder. If you haven't read it yet, it's also a great activity to do. But I tweaked it a little, and it's more of finding who's stronger than the other or who is more that individual, okay, out of the three. Oh, wow. so you guys are game. Give me a thumbs up. And all I'm going to ask you is, uh, you know, characteristics, personalities, and all you have to do is either if it's you, point to yourself or if it's me or if it's somebody else then you point to them okay okay Game? All right. <laughs> all so right. are, we all, are we all on the same like is yeah you're, you're all in the same Nico always yep, here. Yep. okay uh, right. oh you can just say the name or we, we could like grab sign language yeah. or something sign language yeah, yeah. all right okay, yeah. okay. So yeah. the first first question is who Oh no, where's Gab? <laughs> okay, when he gets back. Let's start with the two of you. Okay, okay there he is. He's back, he's back. I mean, who is, who has the most patience? Nico. Where's Nico? Nico for me too. I would say Gab. <laughs> Honestly. <Nico. laughs> okay, all right, next. Who tends to be more strict? When you have your meetings, who is the stri stricter? Uh, person. <laughs> so <laughs> As you guys can see, they're all pretty much cool and humble. So I guess there's nobody in this one. All right, next. <laughs> next question. Who is most likely to overshare? To overshare? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll take that one. I'll take that one. <laughs> All right, next question. Who is most likely to become a famous actor? I would have to go with Liam. Liam. <laughs> For sure. For sure. <laughs> okay, of course, you guys are all close friends. Who is most likely to be unable to keep a secret for just 30 minutes? Oh, Liam, Liam. Also. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> Who tends to laugh at the wrong moment? Liam again, Liam again. <laughs> <laughs> You're winning this, Liam. Is it, All right, is it next. Is winner? 
Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next. Who takes the most selfies? I don't think. Um, Nico, Nico, Nico. I see like Nico, Nico. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 Nico. He's got these famous elevator selfies. Yeah, he got like an elevator, like outfit of the day, day yeah. 709. I'll take it. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, I love okay, all the then, very selfies, yeah. yeah. And lastly, who is most likely to be late in an important event? Ah, uh, Gab. Let's go with Gab, yeah. <laughs> because of, it Gab. Only because of internet connection, though. I have to de defend Gab here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Thanks, Nigo. So thank you. Thank, thank you, guys. That was, a good, that was a good laugh for me, and I'm sure it was a good laugh for everybody <laughs> that knows me who's tuned in. So thank you, everyone. Before we wrap up, of course, guys, share again your announcements. Where can they find you for the association and individually? So go ahead, Gab. We can start with you. Um, well, I want to pass it on to Nico because he's a marketing head. He knows all the details about the GA. So, Nico, take it away. Okay, take it away. <laughs> so you can follow us at um, the Homeschool Global Alumni Association on Facebook and LinkedIn, and at HT Alumni Association on Instagram. We also have, um, if you are currently in High Unite or you're graduating, you can also register to become part of our association at ph.homeschoolglobal.com slash alumni. As you can see here, it's showing at the bottom. Um, and do reach out. We would love to hear from you guys if you have any questions or um, anything at all you want to bring up about um, life after homeschooling or college and beyond. We're here to make sure that you don't go through it alone and that you are equipped with all the tools that you need to make sure that your life after homeschooling is successful. Um, and with that being said, you can follow all of us on Instagram. Um, my Instagram is at Nico Velasco. You can follow my photography page, Nico Velasco Photography, and my podcast, which is on Spotify at The Real Year Project. Yes. Yeah, I'm passing it back to you. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to ask. You don't have to follow me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and Liam? How about the Kumu show that you, you have? Yeah, so you can catch us on Kumu. We do it on Friday, so make sure to stay tuned for that. Check out our Homeschool Global, Home, Homeschool Global Alumni Association page and our High and Night pages. And guys, we're here for you. Remember that. And if you're, if you're feeling down or you need some advice or help, you know, we're here. Just give us a chat in Homeschool Global Alumni Association. If you're a parent and you're thinking of the maybe a great investment, try homeschooling because you get to invest with your kids and they get to learn a lot, especially now it's actually the best time to try it since you know it's pandemic and everyone's homeschooled anyway. Why not go full all the way? Let's be homeschooled. Try it out for a year. If you don't want it, you can put it back. That's how I think that's how most of us started. So it's really yeah. fun. But I encourage everyone out there. It's worth um, it, guys. Like, like our page. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Definitely products of homeschooling. Uh, and I'm grateful for your time. I know that you have busy schedules as college students, working college students who give back. That is a trifecta. If, if that doesn't make you or encourage you to support the association or even homeschooling, then I don't know what will. But in God's time and in, in you know, all the decisions that you make, just know that you're not alone. As Liam, Nico, and Gab mentioned here, especially for the homeschoolers who are experiencing it now, whether you are coming from traditional school or a homeschool provider, reach out to these guys and ask them for advice because I'm I am pretty sure they're more than happy to give that. So again, thank you to everyone who's tuned in on Facebook. I see Maha, Ezekiel, Aldrin, Jasmine, Nikki, of course. Yes, Jasmine, love the conversation. Me too. Mm -hmm. And please continue to just empower everyone. Because even me, mm -hmm. you know, this is what I love. And I just love to empower the youth, just like what you guys are doing. So keep pursuing your purpose. And guys, you know, I was having too much fun. But of course, this is the end of our show. And thank you again, Liam, Gab, and Nico for sharing your inspiring stories. Thank you so and much, like Mate, for having thank us. You. Yes, it's great. Of course. There's going to be part two, don't worry. We have so many collaborations. 
And everybody on Kumu, thank you so much. Marami salapat po. And do tune in to the next episode of In Love With Me. Once again, I am Mafe Yunam Velasco, reminding you that you should love and be proud of your own story that you tell. And like what Nico, Gab, and Liam shared earlier, you know what to do. Because actions speak louder than words. And thank you for tuning in in this episode of In Love With Me. Thank you, guys. Thank you for watching and love of me series. Oh.